is going on everybody this is the roaming prepper channel i'm your host pete and more than likely if you're watching this video i did not get put in the doghouse by youtube for an extended period of time um that if i do get put in the doghouse it would be because of my video say her name uh, about uh lizzie medina and uh yoselin down in houston who are Houston and in Edna, Texas. Um, watch that video separately. I don't want to go off the rails, but I do want to spread awareness of what's going on with trafficking and the young women in our community. <clears throat> Excuse me. But let's go to my current topic, DoorDash terrorism, DoorDash sabotage. What the hell am I talking about? I'll be right back. It's an interesting article, something for us to think about because it's a different evolution of the way I would expect things to go. Hang on just a second. All right, so what the heck is the roaming prepper talking about? What are you talking about? DoorDash sabotage. Well, according to the Wall Street Journal, um, Russian saboteurs are behind the arson attack at a German factory. So let me see if I can share this screen with you because it shared before and then it got angry at me. <clears throat> Sorry about the congestion, folks. So according to this, Berlin and Bentley's hunting a sky raisin. For those of you who wonder what a sky raisin is, that would be a fly or a beetle. Jalapeno sky raisins would be things like a wasp. He has not eaten a jalapeno sky raisin. He has eaten quite a few sky raisins. Um, it's just a West Texas thing. But anyway, I thought you guys would find that amusing. Back to the story. Okay, <clears throat> Berlin, a fire, as fire swept through a sprawling factory owned by a company that manufactures air defense th systems, thick dark smoke spread through a neighborhood of luxury villas and diplomatic residences, police warnings, Blair, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, <clears throat> Uh, Western security officials now say the fire was set by Russian saboteurs trying to disrupt shipments of critical arms and munitions to Ukraine. Now, at its face, it, this seems pretty damning. But then it says um, European countries seeking to avoid escalation have been cautious about publicly blaming Moscow. But privately, security officials say Russia appears to be stepping up attacks on civilian and military sites in Europe. Now, <clears throat> that's a concerning thing situation the company said friday um, in its report by its insurers said a technical problem caused the fire company representative said friday that the technical problem could in theory have been caused by sabotage now keep in mind the article itself from the wall street journal clearly says russians were behind the arson attack but then you read two paragraphs down and it says well they said the technical problem could in theory have been caused by sabotage. So, so that's not a, it's a misleading, it's clickbaity, that title, but interesting evolution. But that's not surprising to anyone if you studied fifth generation warfare, asymmetrical warfare, however, whatever it is you, you're interested in, you can see that's, that's different stuff. Um, <clears throat> but here's the interesting thing. The fire at the deal factory likely started in an area which, to which only a few people had access. All CCTV footage was lost in the fire. Now, why would they not have an online backup of a security camera of a military manufacturer? That just seems strange to me. Um, since the start of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, the security officials, dozens of incidents have taken place across Europe, many potentially the work of Russian intelligence agencies aiming to curb arm productions and to sow panic. It says targeting civilian infrastructures such as wind farms and pipelines also aims at intimidating investors as European economies are struggling. Data cables and pipelines in the Arctic and the Baltic region were cut by civilian ships linked to Russia. It goes on to talk about this, but part of it says Russian spy masters have turned to Telegram, a popular social media app for recruiting. Some might not even be aware they're working for Russia. Moscow has increasingly sought to attract Russian-speaking Ukrainian migrants into Europe. 
intelligence and law force enforcement officials say this is the gig economy for sabotage and terror perpetrators get recruited like uber drivers but the effect is often the same as with using professionals um, earlier this month a man was charged with an attempted act of terrorism on behalf of russia and the czech republic uh trying to set a fire to a military base so this is interesting <clears throat> this is where you start to see a, a weird hybridization of organized crime and warfare. And I'm going somewhere with this. So during World War II, the US government, the FBI made a deal with the mobsters, the Italian mafia in the East Coast. And they said, don't let the Nazis in. You guys own the unions, right? The unions were all corrupt anyway. This was before the FBI went after them like 30 years later. Um, don't let the Nazis in. And we're going to turn a blind eye to gambling and, and smuggling marijuana or whatever the hell they were doing back then. And the mafia was like, all right. And it was never written in stone, but it was authorized. So the mafia on both coasts and the various mobsters, American gangs, because their own sons were also, you know, drafted and sent to war, were protecting the home front. Now, obviously, this probably goes further back, but it's not the first time we've seen where organized crime becomes a tool of a government to fight a war. In this case, it was a defensive purpose, protect the, protect the docks, protect the shipyards, stuff like that. But that's concerning because if Russia is out there hiring third parties to commit acts of terror, how hard would it be? for them to do the exact same to the United States and to say, you know what? You cartel guys in Nicaragua, El Salvador, Mexico, and mainly further south, because the Mexican cartels don't want America to collapse because that's where they make their money. They want America to have money so they can send drugs here and they can, people pay them lots of money to drop people at the border, right? This is a cash cow for them, but further south, um, I mean, MS-13 is basically Satanists. If you've seen Ecuador's president's interview, all of them have satanic tattoos. Like, it's just the biggest Satan cult ever. They don't care. They want to kill or they want to make money. How hard would it be, regardless, even if it's Mexican, wherever, Cuban, Venezuelan, even American gangs, hey, we're going to pay you guys, Gang X, Cartel X, to get our guy across the border. Set him up with an apartment, a Kalashnikov, C4, etc., and he can go and do bad things. Now, with 7 million coming across the border, 10% of 7 million, 700,000. 1% is 70,000. 0.01% is 7,000. So, just running very flat math. 7 million migrants, if only 0.01% are operatives, 0.01%, that's 7,000. I may have done my math wrong. Hell, even if it's 700, 9-11 was executed with 30 people, 12 in the air, the rest were on the ground providing support, money, and whatnot. I'm sure there were other people funding it overseas, but operationally, 30 people-ish, give or take, if that that we know of what could 700 do interesting now we can do the same right us cia we got cha-ching who's to say we're not going and saying you know what hey um kurdistan rebels or you kazakhstan uh anti-russian movement we'll give you five million dollars in m4s how do we know that the weapons, the Taliban, we left in Afghanistan, which are allegedly in the hands of the Taliban, what if they made a deal behind the scenes and said, look, we won't drop carpet bomb on your ass, but all those weapons need to go to these guys, and then those guys will go and attack Russia internally. We don't know. What I'm saying is, if this escalates, it's not going to be battlefront, battlefront, two armies fighting along a front line like World War II. It's going to be different. It's going to be really freaking weird. And on that note, we need to pay attention to our surroundings. 
you see weird things going on in a warehouse you see strange groups of people and it's not to be don't go out and be racist oh they're from wherever that's not what i'm saying i know my neighborhood we've got black folks here we've got white folks here we've got hispanic folks we've got a bunch of vietnamese folks which is kind of comical because this is climate is nothing like vietnam but they're here they own a bunch of businesses bakeries and all sorts of stuff we have indian folk here we have middle eastern folk all these people i kind of know the feel of my town at this point being here five years you suddenly see something wigged out way out of the ordinary that's the kind of stuff you want to pay attention to and remember if it happens internally if there are attacks within the country what's the first thing they're going to do they're going to shut down entire areas or they're going to shut down the roads they're going to put a curfew you need to be in the back of your mind am i prepared to have to stay at home while counterterrorism cops whoever starts hunting the bad guys in the street can i defend my home what if the bad guys decide you know what that little house on the corner looks like a good place to hide while the fbi is trying to kill us and they kick in your door you need to be ready for this not just from your common criminal but from actual situations these are all sorts of little nuanced things but i find it very interesting that they're basically recruiting criminals who want to make a hundred grand 50 grand they're like we'll pay you fifty thousand dollars go and set fire to this factory because you damn well know in our country both on the far far left and the far far right we have enough assholes who will go and accept that money and then go commit an act of terror and small amounts 50 grand 100 grand you could hide that in an offshore account you pay someone five million dollars that's going to get a lot of attention you pay someone fifty thousand dollars in five thousand dollar increments in five different bank accounts it won't flag anyone it'll look like a guy making a salary something to think about i just thought this was really an interesting evolution um the article is again from uh from oh sorry i just lost my screen here uh the article again is from the wall street journal go check it out read on it and then ask yourself if this happened here if they hired criminals gangs to execute sabotage screw up railroads blow up a burn down chicken farms wouldn't kind of makes you wonder right a lot of weird fires happening here lately derailments all over the place big ones not like oh they derailed cows are all over the road no there have been some bad ones cleared out of town in ohio what the hell we may already be there pay attention know your area know your geography know where your prevailing winds blow if something blows up or catches fire here where will that smoke go do i have a way to seal my house if i have to leave my house for an emergency to get meds to go to the hospital do i have a mask something to survive with all these little scenarios now this is going to be not the 90 percent likely stuff this is the small percent the 10 percent so if you're going to buy a mirror mask budget it if you're going to plan for that 10 percent, 5 percent likelihood stuff that takes some time budget it in don't sacrifice the day-to-day -day preps you need for 90 percent of the stuff for the 10 percent okay so this is one of those cases I'm telling you to prep for the 10%, not the 90% likelihood, but the 10% likelihood, but do it smart and do it as part of your overall prepping. Don't screw up your budget because of a small possibility of something happening. Could it happen if we get into a shooting war? Absolutely. But we're not there yet. But understand, hey, this could happen in the next year, in the next five years, whatever. So why don't I start budgeting now? to have what I need for this particular situation in six months or a year, whatever works for you and your budget. Anyway, folks, that's what I'm leaving you with. Interesting article. Go check it out. I enjoyed reading it. It kind of one of those, hmm, when I was done reading it. So go enjoy. You guys be good. Be safe. God bless. Thank you for joining me once again to hear my ranty shit. And uh, you guys be safe out there. Mm -hmm.